Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flights in 2020. The SC Designs F-16 got a recent update. It is version 0.8.0 .0, and I decided to try it out during a live stream to see the improvements. Uh, mainly they were visual improvements, the improvement on the afterburner effect and the cockpit. I have my own custom livery here that may or may not be relevant to what eventually happened during the live stream. And I was taking off at Vancouver and just sort of enjoying myself. I was plotted to land at Toronto, but I, even though I loaded 100% fuel in the menu, main menu, it only gave me 50%. So I, I was resolved to land somewhere else initially and then maybe pick up some more fuel and then head on to Toronto in the end. Uh, but as it turns out, it got more range than I thought. Here we are breaking the sound barrier, as you could hear. Uh, we have the silence up front now and we are on afterburner. Uh, so yeah, all was going fairly well initially. Uh, and we got to 60,000 feet and I sort of leveled out and tried to accelerate. Now the top speed for the F-16 is supposed to be around Mach 2.05 or something like that. It's usually a little bit hard to push it to there, but we are clean. We don't have external tanks or anything like that, nor the conformal tanks. Not that in flight sim I would expect the, the drag to be applied properly. That only happens, I think, on the F-104 by Sim Skunk Works. So here we are at 63,000 feet. Now, its service ceiling is supposed to be 55,000, but, you know, those service ceilings are fungible. And uh, I wasn't too surprised that I could get to even 65,000 feet. Uh, but, you know, that's all down to how they configure the engine performance which well anyway here we are at 72,000 feet and so this is this is the thing now I don't know maybe it's something to do with my install now I I uh, controlled for the livery you know I'm using a custom livery that I made but I did try this out also with the Thunderbirds livery that comes with the F-16 and it did the same thing so we can continue going upward we are at 80,000 90,000 now above the altitude that the SR-71 can fly. Uh, we are above Mach 2 and we will eventually get to Mach 3. Uh, we are at 100,000 feet and there aren't enough digits on the little tag there to fit that, 110,000 feet. So basically I'm reporting this because this is still 0.8.0 .0, so apparently they could uh, in, you know, fix it if necessary. Of course they can fix it anyway, but you know, in principle, it's not the final version. Uh, but also I'm asking viewers if they have the SC Designs F-16, try this out and tell me whether you have the same thing or whether it's because I've got some weird mod conflict that nobody could have fathomed or something like that. Uh, maybe it's something weird about my install that leads me to get to, it's currently at 100, almost 140,000 feet Mach 3, you can sort of see it on the HUD there. And yeah, obviously it's not supposed to be able to do that as we approach Lake Manitoba there. Being able to go this high means that its fuel consumption is much lower than it ever ought to be. And so in, on half a tank of fuel, uh, we were able to go all the way to Toronto. You can see our ground speed there, more than 1,800 knots. And uh, pushing 150,000 feet now. I didn't decide to try to see how far up it could go. You can see our indicated airspeed is only 180 something. So it wouldn't be able to go much further than that as we are above Lake Superior. And I really needed to descend if I wanted to land in Toronto here. This is the strait between Lake Superior and Lake Huron that we're passing over and I have begun descending. I was interested in the sort of photo scenery there on the land because it seemed to have a hard line there. But below 100,000, still just trying to keep our fuel consumption low because I'm pretty close to not having any fuel at all. And here, making more large sweeping turns to kill speed. And then a uh, cloud appeared over Niagara Falls and Buffalo. Basically, that's what I was over. And that cloud became very persistent, very persistent. And to a degree that I wondered whether the game was pissed off at me for going so high and fast or something. Uh, you'll see as we land at Toronto Pearson, 
Uh, so 70,000, uh, you can hear the loud noise from the air brakes. That's the air brakes making all that. And yeah, there's that cloud. And it's a very foggy sort of cloud, making it really hard to see the airport. And ultimately, I flew over the airport, uh, came around and landed. But visibility was negligible. I suppose this does happen in Toronto, and there's bingo fuel. At least I had some nice displays to work with. The left multi-function display is showing me the ground even though I can't see it outside of the canopy. And the right one is a very nice map, and so I can line up with that. Here is the original audio for a bit as I react to the scene in front of me. Uh, <laughs> I'm just using that monitor there. I'm too high. And that was that. <laughs> so, not too much reaction, but that was an uh, interesting landing. Well, tell me if you've got the SC Designs F16, can you go that high and fast, or is it just me? I'm genuinely curious. I have no idea. I'm sure it's not supposed to do this, but well, it did it. I was not intending for it to do it, but it did. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.